One of the strange ironies of Irish history is that just when Gaelic civilization went into a long, lingering decline at the end of the 17th century, there emerged one of Ireland's most gifted composers of popular harp music, Thurloch Carolan. Carolan was born in 1670, and he became a harper when he began to go blind in his late teens. Now, it's equally ironic that many of those who were Carolan's greatest patrons and admirers were the grandchildren of those English Cromwellian planters who brought about the change in the political and social order that hastened the decline of the Gaelic system. After the Irish War between James II of England and William of Orange in the last decade of the 1600s, the penal laws were enacted against the majority population and a colonial regime was established. The Battle of the Boyne was fought in 1690, and the following year, the 21-year-old Carolyn took to the road as a travelling harper. In Ireland, the country mansion of the landed gentry was commonly referred to as the Big House. But the harpers continued with the ancient tradition of playing for their occupants, regardless of who they were, Catholic, Protestant, Old Gaelic stock, or planters. Carolyn was welcome wherever he went. With its numerous retainers and dependents, the big house formed the most important social unit in the countryside, a sort of oasis in a desert of poverty. As far as the gentry of the late 1600s were concerned, the harp was the principal musical instrument, and many of them had their own harpers. This is the house of the Honourable Garach de Brune in Lugalaw, County Wicklow. He's a patron of Irish music and a student of harping and harp music. His guest today is guitarist John Feely, and he plays one of Carolyn's pieces from the early 1700s, which he wrote for a member of the Norman Irish family, the Burks. <laughs>
Towards the end of the 1700s, the ancient style of playing the harp was in danger of dying out. So a group of wealthy men and women in Belfast decided to organize a harp festival. They placed an announcement in the Belfast newsletter on the 27th of April, 1792, inviting harpers from all over Ireland to attend a festival on the 10th of July following. Cash prizes would be awarded, they said, in proportion to the merits of the several performers. Randall MacDonnell, as head of the County Antrim clan, is known as MacDonnell of the Glens, where the traditional family seat is located. His great-great-great-grandfather, Dr. James MacDonald, was one of the founders of the Belfast Harp Festival. Dr. MacDonald's father was a patron of one of those who played at the festival, the blind harper Arthur O'Neill. Well, Arthur O'Neill, in about se in the 1770s, um, he toured all over Ireland, staying in the great houses. He came to Glenariff, to the home of Michael Rowe MacDonald of the Glens, and stayed there for two years. As far as I know, that's the longest period he stayed with any family in Ireland uh, continuously. And he taught the three children of Michael Rowe the harp, uh, James Alexander and Randall. And James MacDonald, who's my great-great-great-grandfather, was uh, the man who in 1792 was the principal organizer of the Belfast Harp Festival in that year. Arthur O'Neill, a County Tyrone man, was 58 years old in 1792. He knew all the good harpers and gave their names to the committee. They included the oldest harper of them all, Dennis Hempson from County Derry, who was aged 97. He lived until he was 112. Thus, he had the unusual distinction of having lived through three centuries, born in 1695 and dying in 1807. Charles Byrne, a County Leitrim harper, was born in 1712. He had a great many songs and stories which were written down by the young musician Edward Bunting. Bunting was hired by the festival committee to transcribe the music played by the harpers. He was so inspired with what he found that he went on to do further collecting in Ulster and Connacht and published his collections in three separate volumes. One of the tunes played at the festival and later published by Bunting was the old air on Julian.
In the first half of the 18th century, music of Italian composers was very popular in Ireland, and Irish harpers who played in the big houses would have been quite familiar with their music. It's generally believed that Carolyn met one of them, Francesco Gemignani, who was living in Dublin at the time. One of Carolyn's early patrons, Charles O'Connor of County Roscommon, said that the blind harper was charmed by Vivaldi, but that with Corelli he was enraptured. And the music of another Italian contemporary, Domenico Scarlatti, would also have appealed to Carolyn. Carolyn composed songs and tunes not only for his patrons. Friends and loved ones were not forgotten. He wrote a tune for a man called O'Flynn, butler at the house of one of his patrons, the McDermott Rose of Roscommon. Gareth de Brune recalls a story about a falling out Carolyn had with O'Flynn over drink. Yes, well, of course, Carolyn wrote a tune called O'Flynn, who was a butler was he the butler of the McDermott Row? And it seems that he was um, not prone to handing Carolyn the quantities of whiskey that Carolyn would have liked to have been handed. And Carolyn, after all, on his deathbed, I don't know if it was due to the influence of drink or not, fell out of his bed. And um, he commented that 
He'd admit, heard of many people falling down when standing up, but he'd heard of few falling down when they were already lying down. Um, but the butler on one occasion, Carolyn found just going into the cellar, and he thought this would be an excellent opportunity to persuade him to pass out a little whiskey, which O'Flynn refused to do. And after O'Flynn had refused to give Carolyn whiskey, Carolyn is supposed to have said, what a pity Hell's Gates are not kept by O'Flynn, so surly a fellow would let nobody in. Carolyn wrote a plaintive piece called Blind Mary, but who exactly she was we don't know. The sons of one of his patrons, Dr. O'Connor of Roscommon, were taught the harp by one Moira Dahl, Blind Mary, and it could have been for her that this piece was written. <laughs> that harpers accompanied the court poets who were among those of highest rank in ancient Gaelic society. These poets were the product of the Bardic schools. John Derrick's picture from the year 1581 shows the chieftain at his meal being entertained by a reciter, who is known as a rakida or bard, and accompanied by a harper. The poet, or file, a dignified figure, watches from behind. When Carlin went on the road as a travelling harper, his first place of call was the house of George Reynolds in County Leitrim. Reynolds suggested to the young harper that he might like to try his hand at composing a piece of music about a battle between the fairy hosts of two neighbouring hills. This resulted in the graceful song of She Beg and She Moor. It's followed immediately by an air called Tordum the Love, Give Me Your Hand, by the County Derry harper Ruri Dal or Kahain.
Thank you.